Hey guys, welcome back to Spike Plays. It's been a while, but I wanted to give you guys some amazing modern decks that are flying under the radar right now, and you can take to your FNM and smash online with. As well as we always appreciate the support, and we'll be hitting you guys with some CDH content soon. Alright, let's get into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Our first deck's gonna be Heliod and Company. Um, so basically, the main point of this deck, uh, you, you go infinite with Heliod and Spike Feeder. The uh, reason that we have this as our first underrated deck is um, it's honestly been amazing at LGS's. It's done really well for me and another friend that plays it. Um, and it kind of gets around a lot of weird stuff in the meta. Um, it just going infinite with infinite life usually will just beat a ton of decks. And uh, it has really good creatures. You can actually play like a beatdown plan with some of the creatures. Even Ariok has like pro black red, which is kind of important right now. Uh, what, what do you think about the deck, Alex? Yeah, so one of the things I thought was always pretty good about Heliod is the fact that um, if you have a Heliod in play, assuming once Spike Feeder comes down, it's pretty difficult to stop it, actually, because they'll wait on the activation, right? They don't need to gain infinite life instantly, so they'll oh, wait yeah. for you to try to remove the Spike Feeder. So really, you need to have, like, double bolt or double push, something like that. On yeah. The, spike feeder yeah that's um, true I, I always forgot about that the the weird intricacies with the deck like you can get really really good with this deck because there's so many little like points where you have priority and you can like activate things that will like secure you the game because it forces your opponent to have like double removal which like is very rare or to have like basically they have to deal with almost two things because in response to something you can just go infinite and so like if yeah it, it's really interesting I, I like that you pointed that out yeah so that's kind of the thing about heliod right like i get that it's kind of fallen off because we have fury just shooting your creatures and mm. we have prismatic ending that hits everything yeah look i get that but the deck still like forces you into awkward positions pretty often i think it's better than a lot of these other like it's better than you think i probably um there's a lot of like these rogue decks that you know, it's modern. People just bring what they have, right? Like, oh, yeah. you'll have people have rolling chances. up with Affinity or, you know, random stuff like this uh, to game stores. And I think Heliod is really like a cut above them. You know, it say definitely what you will, like, maybe it's not like tier one or what have you. And okay, sure, that's fine. But I think it really still does have a place. Yeah, for, for what, like, the amount of play it gets online and like in the meta right now. I like never see this deck, but this deck still just rolls people like without a doubt. Like, also don't forget that the reason people are like not playing this as much is because the nobody wants to play it on MTGO, right? And typically people look for that to figure out where the meta is going. So oh, you don't sure. see it on MTGO, so you think like, well, maybe it's not worth looking at. So that kind of comes down to the paper. It definitely is. I'll, I'll go over there, like a little bit of the sideboard. So dampening spear for like Tron. Endurance for that good like graveyard hate, force of uh, vigor for um, usually hammer time. Sometimes amulet sign. Um, same with path is just a good removal spell. Sanctifier is getting good. You can actually play sanctifier's like main board I've seen, and then veils just for control matchups. But I think with that said, we can go move on to the second deck, which is going to be our one of my favorite decks, uh, Mono Red Prison. I, I love this deck. It's been doing really well for me. Um, yeah, it's just been doing great for me. Uh, this deck just plays the Ensnaring Bridges, Chalice. That's your prison pieces with obviously Blood Moon, my favorite card for sure. Uh, and then Karn is the other piece that, like, usually you'll get your lock pieces down, and then Karn, Karn kind of seals the deal with um, Liquid Metal Coat, and you're just constantly blowing up their lands. They can never get out of the lock. And then you, you just drop good creatures, obviously Magus for that extra Blood Moon effect. Um, you can run more or less depending on how much removal is in your meta. I've seen people tending to go toward more right now because people are taking out like kind of weird, but they're taking out like removal sometimes for like the like amulet decks and stuff like that, like the combo decks. So it just depends. Uh, Bone Crusher gets rid of stuff, Fury gets rid of stuff, and is just like a crazy beater. And then Pyro gets you that card draw because honestly, like. You need to find your threats eventually to close up the game, right? You can't yeah. you can't just be like finding land after land. You, I get that they're block, locked under Blood Moon, and that's really strong. But right. you also want to be able to like find your Chandras or your 
just even your card, you need the card. Yeah, sometimes, can just close out the game by itself if it really gets into that beat, yeah, beat down stage. Yeah, you definitely need the Karns um, and like the Chandras to like close out the games. But season, season effectively is just a three mana draw two cards, like and a, and a two two creature. So it's pretty insane. I think my um, the th reason I would see like play this deck especially is just the bold statement of like four main deck Blood Moon. Right, there are spots in the meta game where you definitely want that if you have. A game store where there's a lot of people running around with like these mopey Yorion piles or like money pile or that oh, sort yeah. of thing. This you deck, can really this deck destroys crack it. them across the jaw with the Blood Moon and watch them struggle. Out, out of the decks that we're going to talk about today, this is my favorite deck and the deck that I would be the most comfortable taking to like a 1k or a big event um, because I know it would really shake up like a lot of matches. And actually, I did take it to one of the 1ks. I had to leave early, but that I was actually doing pretty well with the deck. I was, I think, 2-1-1, one, and one, which was putting me sufficiently in like the top 5, but there was like probably 4 or 5 more rounds I couldn't stay for the rest of them. It also rituals really well. Another thing that you can do with this deck is, um, I've done it before against like Control and some like other slower decks, is get a turn 1 on the draw with Gemstone, Karn, <laughs> or like a turn 1 Chandra. And that just like completely throws them off so hard that you ramp that hard and like getting one of these turn one is insanely swingy because they're waiting for you to drop like a stacks piece and you're just like nah i'm just gonna like turbo out some like planeswalker and they're just like oh crap i can't remove that yeah now you have them on the back heel because in yeah. one of these cases they want to like they want to slow you down with the counter spells and then like start to remove things piecemeal um and yeah. you're not gonna prismatic ending like a four drop that quickly yeah. yeah it's called prison but i'd say this is basically mono red control like that's how it is like it, it just plays very similar in that way except instead of playing control where you let them play and then you counter it uh this is a proactive just like i i drop my pieces but you're not playing the game anyways <laughs> and then you got the karn uh, i'll talk about the side rule a little bit you got the karn package rabble masters to close out the game a little faster i've been really liking the eidolons um i need to put more in uh these will help lock games out if you can't like fully lock them and they're like searching for answers every time they cast something that's under three it's just gonna hit them for two and that that stops them from like getting a lot of value uh chandra and boil these these are for the control matchups uh dropping a chandra you, you'll just win the control matchup um also like a merc tide is really this is sometimes pretty good against their deck all right our third deck is gonna be belcher um this has been one of my favorite decks as well too um it's just a really really resilient combo deck uh being able to just have all these um flip lands and having one main goal of like turboing out a belcher is amazing and on top of that if you can't turbo out belcher you can just set up a recross path line and this recross will it's basically effectively doomsday but you stack your whole deck um they call it modern doomsday because you're just straight up stacking your deck and then um drawing and trying to try to win off that and uh, it has a lot of protection for its combo and you can even play blood moon which usually hurts combo decks but this is the only combo deck where it actually benefits it <laughs> i think that's kind of cool what are, what are your thoughts on the deck yeah i i really like this deck as far as um I feel like this is probably the best place to be right now. If you want a linear combo deck in modern, um, as much as I like playing, you know, Twiddle Storm, um, yeah. but modern is in general. Modern is a format where they they really want to push you towards like playing creatures and being on this sort of like fair axis, I suppose. Um, and Belcher really sidesteps a lot of this, um, so I think that's good. Um, if you were to compare something like you know Twiddle Storm, like I was saying, uh, that deck just you operate off of lands and you don't need any creatures or anything. Um, you play like Wish Claw Talisman, right? And this is like kind of similar, where you just need your artifact, um, you need your like recross the paths, and then you just show them the deck. Uh, you know that's it. You don't have to worry about like Prismatic ending on my Ragavan. Oh no, uh, I don't need to worry about like. Fatal push and bolt. You know, you're getting virtual card advantage. These do the nothing. The biggest upside of this deck is you can just turbo out a Belcher and then pass, and then hold up packed so that anytime they try to remove it, you can just counter it. 
and then you just go to your upkeep and then in response to the pack trigger you just kill them with belcher yeah i've done that way too many times or i've like if you want to get risky you can play belcher and call their bluff that they don't have uh, a removal for belcher and so if they try to counter it just ca just packed it have it resolve and then just do the same thing just upkeep just activate it it's really really good um and say like they have pithy needles say they have problems like or things to stop belcher usually game two uh some people will run this main but pyromancer's ascension is a loop that you can go off of with recross the path we don't have time in this video to get through this because it'd be like a 25 minute video but if you learn this loop you can go off very early and do some really cool stuff it's going to help you beat the eight so you can yeah. have a main deck you can have it sideboard and bring it in in these games post board where you're expecting to run into some of these things yeah exactly um and then you got the ley lines the furies force of vigors uh veil of summer oh yeah you play four veils which is really uh even better when you're playing against like a uh, controlly matchup this deck does really well into control it's probably one of the main combo decks uh that can do well into like tempo or control lists because it does have ways to like counteract them and get through that tempo yeah, I just think it's an overall great deck. It's really hard though. I don't recommend this for new players. Like, do not buy this as your first deck <laughs> unless you really want to get into it and really want to learn like how to play it. It is a budget deck. It is probably one of the cheapest decks on this list, but it is very hard to play. So I, I would recommend if you, you're getting into the format to lean a little more toward like burn or a more creature based strategy but if you you just want to throw yourself into combo this is definitely one of the best decks you can do that in all right let's go into the fourth deck sultai infect um this deck's been doing amazing just at like different events um i don't see it very often but it's just putting up results consistently like it did really well at vegas right Huh? Yeah, the less that people see this deck, the better it seems to do because people are unprepared for it, right? In yeah. fact, you see this deck that you was really on the radar and people watched out for it, and nowadays it just slips underneath, and that's exactly your game plan, right? You don't want them to be interacting with you. You know, you want them to slip up and like you know try to bolt your thing during combat, and then you pump it in response and it's just a mess and they lose the game off of like the one misplay like that yeah um, it's it's very slippery that's how you could explain it it just gets around a lot of weird stuff it like there's a lot of removal in the meta right now but this deck has so much protection for its creatures that if you don't like e decks nowadays will just like try to get rid of a ragavan and then they're like okay i'm good but like right with this deck you have to get rid of it and then get rid of it again if you don't want to like die or take extra infect damage and what they've been doing, which I think is amazing with the Soul Tie colors, is include Phyrexian Crusader. And this deck is just, I think this is the card that's pushing the deck, or pushing, yeah, pushing the deck. Um, it's the best recent innovation. Into, for, yeah. yeah, it's pushing the deck into like the top tier level because, or that's the reason you see this deck hitting like the number one spot in Vegas or the number two spot or like. I've seen it at like LGS is getting like top eight, top four, like it's just doing really well. And all the ones that I've seen have been running this card. And yeah, most decks don't have an answer to Phyrexian Crusader. Like the only commonly played answer really is Fatal Push. Fatal Push, yeah, that's it. But no on. one is playing Fatal Push. Look at look at the top decks right now. Very few are playing Fatal Push. Um, there's like a variant of Esper Control coming out that I think is pretty good. But that's a very underrated deck as well so like you're not going to see it too often but the main decks that you're going to see are not really playing the fatal pushes they're playing the bolts they're playing the furies they're playing the um solitudes and this thing just gets under all of it it's got it's it's already it already has protection and then on top of that if they have that one maybe fatal push in their hand or they run like something that can get around and kill it you still have all these spells to protect it so you're completely like covered on that ground so it just makes it so annoying to get rid of that they spend so many resources that you can just get underneath them and it honestly in fact plays the long game really well because you're just going up to 10 they have to kill you they have to go to 20 so you're already halfway there i don't know i, th I think it's pretty interesting what do you think of the sideboard choices yeah um i think the sideboard is you know pretty solid I like it, yeah. 
yeah, like you want these free spells. I like you know, spell like, pierce. Free... That's really cool. Yeah, spell pierce is good to like fight on this sort of like permission access against these control decks because we're seeing that a lot of that right with like blue white control is always a favorite. Um, yeah. You have like money pile. Money pile is basically control. Magic, yeah. And... They're playing counter magic and Merc tide shells, so exactly. And I, I love, I love the spell pierces here. I think spell pierce is a really good card right now. Same with veil um, to protect your stuff, and then for endurance. I honestly, I think endurance is the best out of all the elementals. Um, it, it, it just for me, the way I've seen, it, I've seen this card win more games than any other like elemental. It's, it's an insane card. Solitude's up there as well, but like, dude, this card's awesome. Um, speaking of that card, we'll get into our next deck, which does include it. And uh, this is a deck we just literally brewed up because we couldn't find like something for it. This is how underrated. This is like straight underground. You're going to the back alley, like some guys pulling decks out of his trench coat. Like this is this is one of those Nobody dirty decks. Like this, this is one of these dirty dirty decks you do not want to take home to your family. Um, and, and it's expensive as hell. I'm sorry. That's probably why, like, it's not even played that much, but it is really cool. Um, we called it real pawns at hours. And, uh, so the whole yeah. idea is that, you know, we're, we're playing standard number of lands and we have the utopia sprawl arbor elf package, but we're playing a bunch of modern horizons cards. That is the key here, right? We're playing Ragavons, we're playing Spyro, we're playing fury, we're playing red and six. And, you know, at the end of the day, this deck really wants to slam Blood Moons, pillage and stone rain your opponent, and then slam Gargaroth and yeah. It's yeah, it's good. It's got a good engine. It's the Arbor Elf, Utopia Sprawl, and Ragaman. You have so much ramp. You are almost guaranteed to get to three mana on turn two, which is setting you up for the pillages, the stone rains, and the blood moons, which is the core of the deck. And then the rest is just kind of like a mid-range gruel pile. Um, and you know you can like adjust these ratios as needed right you know you yeah. can have like more run six or more clothes or like fewer how do you feel or... this is how we felt it would lead to the best um we had we took like a, a, a ponza deck that was like super into ponza it had like karn and like four stone yeah, rain liquid metal coating liquid with metal. yeah which i just it, that's not what you want to be doing right now you want to be out tempo this is basically gruel tempo like this is the equivalent of like a murktide deck but like for gruel i guess it's you're trying to tempo out you're not protecting necessarily but you're just like blowing up their land so they're just behind always and it's just uh keeping you keeping you just basically a little bit ahead each each turn and then you just slowly closing out the game with all these fat creatures once yeah, you start dropping we're, these we're, fatties we're more efficient, and we're not yeah. playing stuff like one volley acid moss or whatever yeah exactly I, I think this is a pretty good list i would definitely build in paper right now um i like honestly I, this is it's it's the only reason i wouldn't build it is because it's expensive as well but uh besides that if you got if you got money to spend you know screw money pile if you want to be cool you want to show up with some dirty deck i highly money recommend pile. Cooler <laughs> money pile this That's is the... this is way cooler than money pile it is a money pile but it's way cooler uh you also got the four, so for the sideboard, we, we looked at the four endurance for that graveyard matchup, and I, I just honestly think that card is just insane. Three mana, three, four with reach, and then the graveyard effect. Uh, four force of vigor to help with like those um, combo decks like Amulet, Charbelcher, and then also obviously your Hammer Time. This will just screw over Hammer Time. Uh, Bayloth, <laughs> this is a little interesting one that we put in. Uh, this yeah. is kind of for burn and for the discard uh, decks. Yeah, so yeah, it's pretty much for... The idea is that you're playing this against decks that are running cards like Kroxa, right? Or yeah. Turok. Um, because it's a really good swing against those decks. Um, you oh, see this 100%. sometimes with, like, in the sideboard for decks like Yawgmoth, right? Where yeah. you it plays double duty and, like, it's good against these Death Shadow decks, but you can also play it against burn right 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 and then you got the ooze for a little bit more graveyard hate and a creature that's just gonna get fat like this thing gets so fat and you have so much mana in this deck you can always usually pump it um storm breath we we kind of put this for those decks that have solitude and um yeah pretty much just anti-solitude and also this closes the game out really quickly uh it's got flying and haste so 
if you need to get over like a control player or something or um i don't know i've seen it actually main boarded it's just like a really big chunky beater that has pro yeah. white so you know if you like really hate control that much you know this could also be additional copies of throne you know that's fine exactly yeah you can you can interchange we're just trying to fill out the sideboard here um and then thrun obviously you gotta have you gotta have daddy thrun um come in this this card is just hilarious this yeah. is the this is Chunky. like if you hate control players just play this card it's so funny like they literally can't get rid of a 4-4 four four with regenerate like that's their biggest crutch is <laughs> a 4-4 four four with regenerate literally this hermit troll shaman like looking dude is like the bane of control players existence i love it. it yeah and uh you can we, we looked at three bolts four bolts so you can definitely like switch around some stuff but this is this is the core that we came up with and we think this is good uh, i'm gonna go over uh all the decks just so you guys got an idea it's heliod and company prison belcher infect and then ponza to end it off but uh yeah thank you guys for watching i we really appreciate the the support and stuff and uh we hope to be coming out with some more cdh content one of our guys was out for a little bit um but he's coming back soon so yeah we'll be doing that you have any last last words here alex um no just thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one cool awesome see you guys